empowering you through the voice of truth with your host, Dr. Joel Hunter. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Joel Hunter, host of Power Talks, empowering you through the voice of truth. On today's program, we've got really good friends of mine, <laughs> um, and these are superheroes in um, Seminole County and Central Florida and beyond. Um, <laughs> On the end is Pastor uh, Andy Searles, who's the lead pastor in Church Together. Um, and then to my immediate left is Vicki Martin, who is the executive director of Christian Help. Let me tell you just a, a, a little about them before we begin. Christian Help is this uh, incredible organization that has over the years um, um, gotten over 120,000 people employed. <laughs> Um, and has uh, delivered uh, 15 million pounds of food. I mean, this is, it's really a, a great organization. Um, and I want to have Pastor Andy on because uh, Pastor Andy is my model for a pastor that's really involved in the community. He um, is the chaplain of the Orlando Soccer Organization, chaplain of uh, the Castleberry Police um, he, he does um, youth sports. He's, he's just always out uh, in the community. And so uh, not only is he a local church pastor, but he models for his church how to make the whole community better. So thanks for coming on, y'all. Oh, thanks for having me. This is so, this is so great. Pa uh, let me go to you, Pastor Andy, first. Um, I'll, I'll buck the system. You know, it's always ladies first. Yeah, ladies first. first. <laughs> but, you know, that. I'm okay. a rebel. I'm we'll a, save the best for last. What can I say? You know, right. <laughs> Beast before the beauty. Uh, right. <laughs> we're off to a good start. <laughs> so so you, were, you were raised in England. Yes. Uh, grew up in England um, and um, um, educated in England. Um, when you came mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. uh, did you bring over with you? Um, I, I guess what I'm asking is, do, do churches in England have a very strong social uh, appro approach to their faith, or is that something you kind of kicked into when you were over here? Is that yeah. how did how did you get oriented toward that? Sure, I, I think um, the church in England is a is a very different kind of church than over here primarily because of the secularization that surrounds it. So when I was in high school, I was probably only one of four or five Christian students mm -hmm. in my high school. Wow. So I kind of functioned as a um, minority there. So the church at that time was having to ask questions of relevancy mm -hmm. and uh, what's our voice, what's our place, those kind of questions. Mm -hmm. so, so I grew up in that kind of environment um, where Jesus didn't just save me as he gloriously has, but Jesus wants to make a difference in society as well. So a big part of my early kind of spiritual DNA um, was wrapped around that. One of my mentors um, spoke powerfully into my life, a statement that I still kind of function out of today. He said, uh, find a need and meet it, mm -hmm. and find a hurt and heal it. Mm -hmm. And that has really become a mantra for ministry yeah. for me. That's yeah. fantastic. Vicki, how did you get started in this whole, I mean, this is a, you, you, you're the head of a, a, a terrific uh, um, helping organization, um, but how did you come to be where you are? How did, how did God <laughs> develop you into this very caring, but administratively, Mm. Um, capable person. Thank you. Um, I, I don't quite know where it came from, and there's parts of it that I that I do. Um, I remember my my parents hosting people in our home from an early age. So when missionaries were in town, we often had them over. So I saw serving um, modeled before me. Um, and I suppose out of that was, was some of the, just what seems natural to me to just help people. I mean, I love people, yeah. want to be around people. And um, when we happened for a time to be living in Oklahoma City when I was about 12, I just decided that I thought I'd go to the local hospital there and become what was called then one of those local candy stripers yeah, yeah. where, where you help people. Those, yeah. And um, and I just loved it. I just wanted to help people. I just, I don't know. And um, so again, I'm sure that's from my childhood and, and from the Lord as well. But I would go there and just serve in the pediatric ward and I would work one shift and I'd call my parents and say, don't come get me. I'm going to stay another oh. eight hours. And so to me, it was just natural. Like you just, yeah. you just help people. Right. And so I've just kind of done that. Um, 
the rest of my life and um, in my adulthood as I continued to volunteer. Christian Help was one of those organizations that I did serve, serve at, mm -hmm. but that was long after I was a client there originally. So I was not always able to be a giver. I was a receiver at oh, times wow. too. Tell us about that. Um, and so, yeah, I was an adult and I was working, but um, I was a, a victim of circumstance and also at my own hand mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And so just through some, some bad living and bad choices, I was in a great place place of need with two little boys and um, I, I was not able to purchase my own food and, and mm. we didn't have Christmas and there's just a lot of a, a lot of need going on a lot of mess yeah. and so um, I was a resourceful person and a creative thinker and I had some real drive in me and so that spurred me on to look and see how could I solve this problem and what could I do to move forward and Christian you, Help was one of those agencies I found. Do you know, I've, I've <laughs> just observed over the years that the people who are the most compassionate mm -hmm. have either at one time in their life needed compassion mm -hmm. or who have loved someone who needed compassion. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this, uh, yeah. let's go back to you, uh, Pastor. Uh, you deal with people that most of us don't deal with when when it comes to like first responders. Mm -hmm. I know you've ridden around in police sure. cars, you know, <laughs> sure. and uh, and what's that like? I mean, how do you um, serve and minister to the people mm -hmm. who are in crisis situations um, yeah. and probably uh, have gone through some you know, post-traumatic stress um, yeah. um, cycles. Yeah. How, do, how do you do that? Well, I think I, I, th I think the the first the first thing you know, as Vicky mentioned, is is we just got to keep our eyes open to, to to the pain, and being involved with the police department gives you a lens on society mm -hmm. like nothing else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so 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 we we kind of ride along, we respond to calls, we see problems. Um, and the police are trained to do that, their job as law enforcement personnel. They're there to, to keep the peace, whereas I see my job to bring some peace, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that's one of the primary questions that, that, that I'm asking in this role, is how can I bring peace mm -hmm. to this situation? Sometimes that's a very practical yeah. response mm -hmm. to a physical need. Uh, other times it's just sitting and listening and loving and hearing yeah. mm -hmm. and bringing peace in that way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Vicki, let me come back to you because mm -hmm. um, Pastor Andy is is involved probably by definition of what some of his roles in some more, uh, some more of the, these dramatic traumas, but mm -hmm. you deal with people who are in day-to-day -day trauma. Mm -hmm. I mean, kind of ordinary, ongoing, cyclical, Right. Um, just <laughs> tough times. Mm -hmm. um, you were a volunteer before you became the leader. Yes. Um, now you have a lot more developmental and administrative responsibilities, but you still deal with people oh, who are hurting all the time. Absolutely, and I want to do that. I have to. I have to do yeah, that. <laughs> good. You got to be a player coach, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. So, what what are some things that all of us need to remember when we're mm -hmm. dealing with with hurting people? Because all of us in our everyday life mm -hmm. run into hurting people, and a lot of people. I hear a lot of people say, "I just didn't know what to say." You know, right. I know they were going through a rough time. I just didn't know what to say, so I didn't say anything. Mm. And then mm -hmm. I hear other people from the other yeah. side going, nobody cared because mm -hmm. they, didn't, they wouldn't even ask me about yeah. it. You know, so what are some things we, we ought to mm. keep in mind? Yeah, great question. Um, I, would, I would start first with how you phrased it in the fact that they are people and they're people that are hurting. And to just remember that and to be fully present with them, to, to look them in the eye and to genuinely care about them. It, it cannot be contrived. Um, it, it really has to be genuine and that will be felt and seen because I believe that that's so much what, what everyone needs, all of us, you know, that we want people to be genuine, that they really care about us. Um, and so then I would also say to listen before lecturing. Let people have that, that safe space to, truly share without judgment how they're feeling about their circumstance. And, and sometimes, depending how they got there, there's um, anger, there's a shame with that, there's low self-esteem, there's a lack of confidence, there's a sense of betrayal, whatever it is, but, but give them that right to just express that, whether you agree with it or not, um, before you dare try and step in with, with solutions or to put 
your your life upon them of what you want for them. Yeah. Um, I recommend a partner approach, like you know, what 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 do you need, or how can I best serve you, or help you through this. And so, a lot of patience is required, some some accountability. Um, you know, but to just be, just be there for them. I, I often liken it to a grief process, that there's stages that people go through because they've lost something, mm -hmm. whether it's um, a self-respect, whether it's a job, whether it's an income, whatever it is, there's a loss going on there. And so give them, again, that safe place and that right to go through the stages of that, but, but to be there for them. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we enter in and it's like, wow, I didn't think this was gonna get that messy and that complicated, and I really just wanted like, you know, two, two minutes with you and I'm kinda yeah. out of here. I'm, yeah. in, I'm in over my head, you know, <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. And, and if that happens, yeah. then, then again, you know, loving, lovingly step away in the sense of maybe you are beyond your, your knowledge base or something, but point them to resources. Mm -hmm. Again, try and be proactive because it's it's an alone journey, and, yeah. and people need um, somebody that just they're they're with them. You may not have all the answers, but just go through it with yeah. them. But sometimes they also can't think for themselves because they're so deep emotionally. That as much as we can help them put one foot in front of the other, like to yeah. think it through, and, yeah. and what about this and. You know, I, well, I, I know Christian Help is known mainly for its um, employment connections mm -hmm. and helping people get um, get the kind of work that they need or that they're good at. Mm -hmm. um, what else? What what's kind of the spectrum of the folks that you serve at Christian Help? Mm, yeah, great question because it really is everyone. Because one, we're not just limited to our. Uh, physical location as far as the requirement of services. So we get people from all of Central Florida and also because you do not have to qualify, you don't necessarily have to be impoverished to receive mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. we, we get literally an entry level worker all the way to somebody that's a, an executive with somebody with a master's degree. Mm -hmm. And so we get people that are basically, what I say, the smartest ones in the rooms who have figured out that I can't do this on my own, and mm -hmm. so I'm gonna go somewhere where they do it on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So there are people that just are saying, you know what? I don't wanna do this alone, just help me. Help me find a job, help me locate the resources I need. Um, and a lot of times while they never directly ask for this, everybody, regardless of the type of person that they are, regardless of education, experience, knowledge, they, they are somebody that, that, that does want to partner in the journey. Mm. That says, come alongside me, teach me what I don't know, just be there for me. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. that, that encouragement piece is, is really yeah. huge, yeah. you know, but it is, it's, it's all types of folks and sometimes people that we would expect and other people that you would, you would be surprised to find yeah. in our lobby, but, yeah. but they're the ones that have said, I raise my hand, I need you. And, yeah. and we're the ones that are extending our hand back and saying, good, good job. Good, good, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Pastor Andy, you, you have, I, I, I get this question for a local church pastor. I was a local church pastor for almost mm -hmm. 50 years. And, and so I so admire what you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been to your church and you're a whale of a preacher. I love your preaching. It's whale. awesome. <laughs> Whale like of a preacher. Big of a whale. Yeah. <laughs> whale of a preacher. Huge, effective. Huge, oh, that's oh. right. Just clap. Huge, to be reckoned with. <laughs> but um, how, how does your church let you go do all this mm. stuff? I mean, a lot of churches have this gravitational pull. Yeah. You're our pastor. Sure. We sure. need you to, you know, sure. do just local church programming before you go. How did you arrange a congregation? <laughs> now, I know you planted the congregation. Yeah. But how did you arrange it so that they don't just see themselves um, as the having exclusive rights to yeah. your time. Yeah. Well, I, I, I think we did have a huge advantage that we started the church. And we started the church with like-minded people. And that allowed us to build a culture, mm -hmm. right? And uh, our, a big part of who we are is that we're not effective as a church if we're not serving the community. Mm -hmm. uh, it is incredible mm -hmm when God transforms a life. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not where it stops, that's mm -hmm. where it starts. Right. So we've really kind of begun with the end in mind. And, and some, somehow it's amazing how God kind of um, reverse engineers that process, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That people will come and serve with us because that's um, mm -hmm. such an attractive value in our society. Mm -hmm. And they will come to know, know Christ that way. So yeah. um, creating a culture of service has been so important for us. And then, you know, things that we, we measure um, and celebrate and, and affirm are probably a little bit, I know they're different from mm. most churches, yeah. right? <laughs> our, our scoreboard isn't how many people in your pews, 
um, you know, what does our offering look like? Our scoreboard is, are grades getting better in the school? Is crime going down in the city? Wow. Are house prices <laughs> yeah, going there up? There you go. That's Those unique, kind of stuff, right? <laughs> I love because, it. because then we know that we're, 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 we're fulfilling this, yeah. this great commission that we've been given. Oh my mm. goodness, that's that's so great. Yeah, if we could just get off the nickels and noses thing, yeah. you know, <laughs> and, and get into, mm. yeah. uh, let me ask this to both of you at once, because you guys, I said, Everywhere I go in this community, you, there you are. I mean, you're, you're like all over the yeah. place. Yeah. <laughs> to what do you attribute that? Are you just nosy, or are you just you just one relationship leads to another? How do as 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 other leaders are mm -hmm. are listening to this? Yeah. I guess what I want them to say, uh, want them to be able to think is. Well, how how do you get involved in the in the larger community? Because yeah. mm. you don't just stay at Christian Health. No, you're in, you're involved <laughs> in many different community mm. organizations, and 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 Andy, you are mm. too. Just yeah. Um, yeah. Um, helping. You don't just go for leadership and things that you uniquely can do. You yeah. go to help other people do what they can do. Sure. Mm -hmm. How does that happen? How yeah. did you How did you do that? Mm -hmm. I think it is one just having a, a genuine interest to do that. Do that so you live life intentionally, right? That um, as you do meet people, um, I, I mean, we generally I would say this we that that you inquire really about what they're doing, what what's important to them, what do they value, what they're passionate about, where are they working, in what space, and then um, see if there's a connection there that that you can add value to that situation. Mm -hmm. Um, so it is not about, you said nickels and noses in churches and, and, and in a social service or nonprofit. That's not about who's getting the credit. Mm -hmm. It's not even about it, it, who's getting the money. It's about who's just getting results yeah. and, and making a difference. And, yeah. and I, I just want to be a part of that. And so yeah. one step somewhere leads to another step. And as I shared earlier before the program started, I was at someone else's fundraiser last night. And uh -huh. it's not necessarily tied to our organization, but I love what they're doing. Yeah. And I, I want to support them. And I want to hear about incredible things that's happening in the community. Community. Teen Challenge, by the way. <laughs> it, was it was Teen Challenge, teen and challenge. They're, they're fantastic. Yeah, and they're awesome. Yeah. And know, they're but, awesome. But, but it is that. It's, it, it is shaking a hand, saying hello, taking a genuine interest, and that, that leads to something else, and then an yeah. inquiry, and I want, yeah. I want to be there. And but, but I would say, and I want my brother to answer too, but I, I would say it's, it's also beyond just... Um, maybe at that level that you would expect this to be out, you know, leader with another leader. Um, that's that's not what I that I look for. You mm -hmm. know, that's not the affinity for me. Again, mm -hmm. it's just where's the heart? What do you care about? And then where's the need? Yeah. I, I have a, a, a second passion to, to where I particularly work at to just really speak into young people's lives and help um, young adults mm -hmm. help navigate their future. Mm -hmm. And so I look for opportunities on my own to do that. I've always felt that just because I'm paid to work at an organization that needs volunteers, that I need to look where I myself can also volunteer. Mm -hmm. I want to be what mm -hmm. I hope others are. Yeah. So I look for opportunities to where I can not be in charge or paid, but right. just be a, a servant. Yeah. And so I like to work with young people and help them um, navigate some of the tough cha you know, choices they're trying yeah. to figure out. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Andy, what about you? What I, I think I think to build on what Vicki said, uh, it, it really is all about relationships, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Life mm -hmm. works on relationships. The yeah. kingdom of God works through relationships. Yeah. Problems are solved through relationships. Things get better as we work together mm -hmm. in relationships. So for, for me, uh, as an introvert, uh -huh. there's an intentional... No, wait, let's, let's go back. <laughs> let's go back to visit this. Surprise! <laughs> because, yeah. Yeah. because so many people will listen to this and say, mm -hmm. boy, those guys are all over the place. They must be extroverts. Yeah. No. And and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that and this yeah. surprises so many people. Mm -hmm. I'm extremely introverted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so and and many of the leaders I know are, yeah. but say that as an introvert. <laughs> sure. Go ahead and finish that sentence yeah. before you were so rudely interrupted. <laughs> um, I, yeah, as as an introvert, I have to discipline myself mm. to become more involved in relationships. Because whatever the problem is, relationships are a significant part of the solution, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so, so, so how do we get out? I mean, for, for me, it's not just a case of, um, hey, here's an opportunity, let's go mm -hmm. to it, right? right? There really is an intentional decision of the will. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that I need to, yeah. to, to, to go and be here to yeah. make friends. Yeah. And what I find is that the more friends we have, the more we shrink the world, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And the more we shrink the world, the easier it is to love the world yeah, and the yeah. easier it is to solve problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think 
Vicki said the word add value. I love yeah. that term yeah. mm -hmm. because when you care about people, you don't need to manage their lives, right. but you want us to add something, sure. mm -hmm. um, just a piece, just a, you know, something that that mm -hmm. they that may be momentary even, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's it makes their life better. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think many times when when I'm interviewing folks who have accomplished a lot, and yeah. you guys have really accomplished a lot, um, sometimes when people are listening. They think, well, I could never do something like. That. Look, mm. these guys are, right. you know, <laughs> off the chart. You know, mm -hmm. big deals, wearing capes. You know, right. and, and, right. in their right. mind, right. Um, right. and not in your minds, but in their <laughs> minds, uh, I could never uh, be that much help. But, but as I know you two, mm -hmm. and as I hear you talk, mm -hmm. you don't think you're a big deal. Um, you just want to make somebody's pretty, life better. Pretty sure of that. Yeah. 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 Well, but, and Joel, to pick up on that too, one mm -hmm. of the things that, that I love, and this is to, 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 to honor you and celebrate what Community Resource Network is doing, I love the simple help email oh, that I get man. every Sunday night. Oh. And, and honestly, I've been trying to follow that. And for Good. me, that is just a... You, you know, everything significant starts with a small step. Yeah. That is a small step that yeah. anybody can do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. For those of you who are listening, go. What is? It? Just go to simple dot help mm -hmm. uh, on your web browser. You don't need a com mm -hmm. or a net or a org or anything like that. Just simple dot help. Yeah. <clears throat> and every Sunday night, if you like, we will send you um, five things uh, to do during the work week that can be done anywhere, by anybody, to anyone. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing is we're all doing them together mm -hmm. in our own realms, yeah. and it just makes the world better. It does. I mean, it does. It, the, the whole key <clears throat> to my life these days as I, as I you know, kind of go into this, <clears throat> this lap, last lap of a, of a season here <laughs> um, is I, I run into a lot of people yeah. who go to bed at night and say, I wonder if the world's any better because of me, yeah. you know? Yeah. And to be able to do something every day and yeah. go, well, it is in that part, yeah. Yeah. you know, just people need something concrete that they can look back and say, well, I made it a little better. Yeah. You know, yeah. not, not I didn't yeah. save the world, but yeah. I made it a little better. Yeah. What would you say, um, each of you, um, is really the secret to serving others. I mean, it's, it's been woven through a lot of your responses already, uh, but just to crystallize it, as you're, mm -hmm. if, if somebody came up to you, if, if a child came up to yeah. you and said, yeah. um, um, how do I be a good servant yeah. uh, to other people? Yeah. What would you say? <laughs> mm. Smile. Okay, oh. yeah. Start with a smile and look at people. I mean, that that is just so huge that people sense that that joy in you that you want to give to them, and that it immediately says, um, "You're somebody. Yeah. You're worth something. Yeah. You have you have value." Like I I want to give myself and my time to you. Just mm -hmm. and so it's not it's not the size of the act or even sometimes the time commitment. Uh -huh. It's the it's that genuineness in the moment that says, um, I know a God that's crazy about you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if the way that I behave towards you can give you an inkling of that, yeah. I, I, I'm all in it. Yeah. Because I, I really do care about, about you in this moment. I want to give myself away. Yeah. And so just to serve, just just smile and bring joy yeah, and encouragement. Good word. <laughs> good word. Yeah. How about yeah. you, Andy? Yeah, I would, I would say the motivation for me mm -hmm. is First, knowing that I am loved, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that I am valued. I'm involved in the pro sports ministry because in, in sports, people are treated like a commodity. Mm -hmm. And we're not commodities. Right. We're people who yeah. are created and loved, and I want to, to communicate that, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the stuff we do with the police department, it's to, to raise the level of care in our city. And why do I want to do that? Because I've been cared for yeah. <laughs> by a God who, who, who loves me. Yeah. So, so I think there's that um, personal philosophical position. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, um, you know, because caring is hard. 
Yeah. Right? It is. It's I mean, raining. Yeah. You know, it sounds, like, sounds, 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 sounds glorious and spiritual. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're a mess. Bring yeah. a mess to their mess. <laughs> yeah, ex yeah, exactly. So I think, I think for me is working out that understanding of how loved I am mm -hmm. on, on a daily basis by starting mm -hmm. the day, get my disciplines in place, getting in places where I can read scripture, where I can write a little bit and just be reminded of how loved I am yeah. and, and, and want to reflect that. Yes. during the day. And yes. I would add on to that, if you don't mind, that I was just thinking about as, as, we, as you were speaking, that um, you cannot have a goal for a result. You have to be in it for the process. Yeah, 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 you good, You know, good. Um, because you, you, get, you get frustrated that way. Yeah. Like if I genuinely just want to care about you as, a, as an image bearer, you yeah. know, as, um, as a human being, I just want to enjoy that process. And I don't mean to yeah. enjoy that it is joyful, because we've said it's complicated, it's right. messy, but that process, being, being to, to have that privilege and that right to be in on someone else's journey yeah. um, is, is a wonderful thing. And it's That's a privilege amazing. that we're given. <clears throat> and sometimes you get to see it end up where you would <clears throat> like or where you hope for them. But, but if that is your focus, then you become agenda driven and you yeah. can get yeah. frustrated yeah. and Absolutely. all of that. And, and it, it turns into something it, it shouldn't, it yeah. shouldn't be. Absolutely, <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good word. I, I'm, we're going to have to, I hate it. All right, time. I hate this. That's good. Pastor Andy Searles, Life yeah. Together, mm -hmm. Church, uh, is it Church Together? Church, Church together. together, I'm sorry. Doing Life Together. Uh, doing, doing Life, life together. together. There you go. And Brandy. Vicki Martin of Christian Help, um, thank you mm -hmm. for being on today. You thank guys are you. heroes of mine, and I love working oh, with you. Love working with you, Pastor. Thank you. Well, as I said, we're out of time, and I hate that, but I want to thank you all for um, for joining us on Power Talks. Remember, these discussions are just that. They're discussions among us, but we'd love to see you continue the discussions at home or go one step further. Get involved, because when Power Talks, you are empowered to the voice of truth. See you next time. <laughs> you just watched Power Talks, a Good Life 45 original production that makes you part of our hope team here on Good Life 45, where hope happens.